Today, you and I are primarily going to have a very formal, informal, I should say, meta-analysis in reference to flavonoids or flavanols and the coronavirus. Now, I use the word coronavirus as opposed to saying COVID-19 because we had to find the similarity. Since COVID-19 is fairly new, we want to look to see, basically in a very informal meta-analysis, a union a commonality between MERS and basically SARS coronavirus 1. We figured if we could find the commonality or union or common ground between those two or weakness I should say, then basically that may play a role into COVID-19 itself. Now with the video we did in Kirsten a little while ago, Kirsten had a unique effect of drop in blood pressure by having an effect on the angiotensin converting enzyme. All right, a little technical, but still just the same. And the pathway that those other two viruses, SARS-CoV and MERS, now also discovered as COVID-19, was ACE2. Now that's where we begin. So we wanted to run a little look at a few different studies and find that common ground. And you'd be quite surprised what we found. Now, you may not know, and we'll cover it towards the end, how many different types of coronaviruses there actually are. And that's why it's important to find the common weakness in groups or subgroups of coronavirus as a whole as, as opposed to just one particular strain. So let us begin as follows. Novel coronavirus receptors show similarities to SARS-CoV, the first one about 2002-2003, according to new analysis. All right, there you see the angiotensin converting enzyme, ACE2. Two, both viruses use ACE2 to gain entry into the cell, but it serves normally as a regulator for heart function. Proceed to the next one. Now, obviously, there's a chance of confirmation bias, but regardless of that, I haven't seen anything to negate that confirmation as of yet. Number two, evolution of Wuhan coronavirus. If I'm mispronouncing Wuhan by any way, shape, or form, please forgive me. Coronavirus 2019 and modeling of spike protein for human transmission. The results point to the important discovery that the Wuhan coronavirus protein supports strong interaction with human ACE2 molecules despite its sequence diversity from SARS-CoV, the first one. So the Wuhan coronavirus possesses significant health risk for transmission across species or between humans throughout, or throughout, uh, throughout it should be throughout, the same infection mechanisms of SARS-CoV, the protein ACE2 interaction. All right, to proceed. So now you get that common ground. So you're looking, you're identifying the fact that ACE2 does play a role in the original coronavirus from 2002, 2003, and the current one as today. So there's a weak link. And so that may also play a role with MERS itself. But to proceed, new compound thwarts multiple viruses, including coronavirus. And you see the common cold, foot and mouth disease, and summer flu. The three C proteases. All right, so now what that's required for obviously is viral replication. So now you have the ability potentially to not only block, inhibit, uh, it's basically uptake into an individual, but also inhibit viral replication like a one-two punch, but to proceed. MERS, remember 2012, 2013, Saudi Arabia, MERS coronavirus butter activity against the other viruses because the main proteases of SARS-CoV-2, the one current today, COVID-19, MERS and SARS-CoV-1 are very similar. The inhibitors will most likely show good antiviral activity against the Wuhan coronavirus, the researchers say. The next step will be to test and so on and so forth. Now the next page. The management of coronavirus infections with particular reference to SARS and obviously from the Journal of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy to extract a section from that study. To proceed, another approach to inhibiting the viral entry infusion is used of synthetic peptides, again, we're not gonna cover those, and small molecules that block the interaction between the S protein, now the connections begin to come, and ACE2. Examples of which are glue peptides representing different regions of ACE2, recombinant proteins targeting the peptides and S protein, and here you see it. Kirsten. You Now you begin to see a flavonoid that may be able to serve both purposes. However though, reserve in your head Kirsten as far as potentially blocking its uptake or inhibiting, I should say block, inhibiting 
a person from catching it, let's put it in simple terms, but not necessarily uh, helping once they have it because it's something better than even cursed it. But the combination between the two would be incredible to proceed as follows. Traditional Chinese medicine and treatment of patients affected by the 2019 new coronavirus, a review and perspective. Now the union of sets begins. Here we go. There it is. Herbicitin, quercetin, inhibit the cleavage activity of MERS-3 CL protease enzyme to start. But then you see it again, the flavonoids, for example, extracted from lychee seeds. Now that's an interesting aspect to epidemiologists. Lychee berry, for example, is a main staple in a lot of Asian diets. So if people are consuming large amounts of lychee, dietary, because it can be toxic if you take too much, then possibly maybe they're not suffering as severe an effect as populations that do not have that in their diet. Kind of like the Mediterranean diet and heart disease, well, it may be an Asian diet in reference to a coronavirus. Proceed as follows. The flavonoids extracted from lychee seeds or lychee berry, herbicitin and quercetin again, it inhibits the SARS-3CL pro, uh, protease activity. So it's really interesting. And there's your connection, the union of sets if you're into math, so to say. Now to wrap it up, why? Why herbicitin over quercetin? Well, here we go. Further study. The antiviral activity of some flavonoids against coronavirus is presumed directly caused by inhibiting 3C-like, that's the 3CL, protease. Here we applied a flavonoid library to systematically probe inhibitory compounds against SARS, COV, 3C protease, again, herbicitin. Let's focus on that, which was found to efficiently block the enzymatic activity of SARS, coronavirus, 3CL protease. So basically we're looking at that right there. This is what they found out. Among them, the best compounds were one flavonoid, herbicitin. And I want to focus on that primarily. And you can see a little chart right there as far as inhibition, which is really powerful on its own. Now, herbicitin, for example, is not that difficult to find. Now, if you go to Wikipedia, for example, here, here you have this incredible, incredible flavonoid flavanol that has an incredible viral inhibitory effect, especially in reference to 3CL protease and virtually no information on it, especially today of all days, the page is virtually blank. Well, you can find it, if you look at that, you can find it possibly in flaxseed, rhodiola, but it has incredible, incredible potential in this very, very informed meta analysis of helping today currently with COVID-19. And you can see some researchers begin to investigate it, but again, I'd like to see more. But however, now, to basically the first question that came up. Let me see if you can get to the date of this particular article itself. The research team isolated and cultured a live virus that binds to human SARS receptor ACE2 and therefore can be transmitted directly from bats to people. Quote, EcoHealth Alliance continues to work in predicting and preventing the next pandemic crisis. Our research uncovered a wide diversity of potentially pandemic viruses present right now in bats in China that could spill over into people and cause another SARS-like outbreak. That's why you gotta find that common link between all the coronaviruses, or at least as many as you possibly can, and work and basically group them up by sets, subsets, or basically as the whole itself, if, if we should be so lucky. Look at the date, 2013. They knew it back then. And let's proceed. And this is gonna answer your question in regard to how many different coronaviruses there are, at least as far as 2015 is concerned, to proceed. New stars like virus can jump directly from bats to humans, no treatment available, finally provide an opportunity to develop drugs and vaccines for coronaviruses before they emerge from animals to cause a human epidemic. The discovery, reported November 9th, 2015, Nature Medicine is notable not only because there is no treatment for this newly discovered virus, but also because it highlights an ongoing debate over the government's decision to suspend all gain function. And part of the reason they did that because they're concerned about bioweapons and so on and so forth, but they did. Function experiments on a variety of select agents earlier this year, 2015. The move has put a substantial standstill on the development of vaccines or treatments for these pathogens should there be an outbreak. Talk about it being Nostradamus. Quote, studies have predicted the existence of nearly 5,000 coronaviruses in bat populations. And in some of these have the potential to emerge as human pathogens. So this is not a situation of if there will be an outbreak of one of these coronavirus, but rather when 
and how prepared we'll be to address it. Talk about predicting the future. But again, there you have it. The flavonoids, flavanols, herbicitin, quercetin show incredible, incredible investigational promise. Regrettably, at this stage of the time, we don't know how much to take, how long, how often, so on and so forth, but still it is worthy to note and it gives something to grasp or sink your teeth into as far as a basically legitimate route based upon correlating research to proceed forward on. Again, thank you very much for listening. I hope you find this information used. I have links to all the articles, but there's too many to have all the DOI citations, but you can find it uh, from the links itself. But again, I really hope you find this information of some comfort, some use, and let's just see where it goes from here. Thank you very much for listening. Gratitude. I look forward to see you all once again in the next seven days. We'll talk about something else besides the coronavirus. Talk to you then. Catch you then. Bye.